Uh, hey, welcome. This is episode 332 of the Clive Barker podcast, and it's also doubling as our Kickstarter video because we've been we were sort of uh, racking our brains on what to do on a video. And it's like, well, we are a podcast. Why don't we just do combine our our latest episode with the Kickstarter. with our Kickstarter video? So if you're if you're here watching this on Kickstarter, you're watching one of our episodes. so You can see exactly what we do, except most of the time it's audio. Um, and if you wanna, if if you wanna check out below uh, all the cool stuff that we have, we're about to describe that to you. Um, but uh, introduce, but yeah. So the the Clive Barker podcast, we've been doing this for ten years, right? Um, it's right. since we, it, we I, I started thinking about I started the planning it in uh, early two thousand eleven. And who are and you? And then we launched in two thousand twelve. And who are you? And I'm Ryan. Like it and says on my little thing. <laughs> Ryan, what's your last name? Dan Hauser. Explain that, it. That's tell, tell us about this. Is the Kickstarter? What's happening oh, here? <laughs> what? Explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a Kickstarter for the Clive Barker podcast. We do one of these every year. This one is uh, Clive Barker podcast presents fundraiser uh, nine, nine celebrations. So uh, they've always been a pun on Hellraiser titles, and the ninth one is Fundraiser Revelation. So that's what that's what we're doing. But we're celebrating our tenth year in uh, in podcasting. Congratulations! Thank or you. Actually, Thank you, we're starting our and we're starting our eleventh year. Yeah. So we got Ed and Nina here. They're joining us for the episode of uh, 2021 Year in Review. And uh, this in this short intro, we're going to talk a little bit about the Kickstarter and what we got available for you guys this year. Um, as usual, there's a lot of good stuff to go through. I am Ed Martinez, and I am in California. And this is my wife, Nina. Hello. And I am your blind podcaster. And we are very thankful and grateful to be involved with this podcast thank you thank you ed so the um the goals for this kickstarter um we've got quite a few so uh basically we want to we, we want to pay the pay the bills you know that's the main reason that we do this every year is that we've got we've got hosting and we've got uh domain names and we've got the podcast hosting and the web hosting and and um some and projects stuff yeah, yeah. And projects that we've done and the dnd in years past you even raised money to go to a convention in person yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, and yeah and we'll, we'll get into that in more detail when we go over all the different years but right um but yeah so we've got some of our goals we're going to be continuing we've been doing uh a to z commentaries from clive barker's a to z of horror his horror recommendations we've been doing commentaries on the movies based on those recommendations and we made it all the way up to the letter S in the alphabet. So that'll be our next one. And that's a uh, book S that, all the way through Z. A book that Clive Barker wrote. And it's all about the films that influenced him as he was coming yeah. up. And he wrote that with who? Stephen Jones. It, it was with Stephen Jones. I see. Yeah. So it, we're planning on doing the letter S, T, U. Uh, there was one that we we're thinking about skipping, right? Because it's Clive Barker movies. We already talked yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. V is for vice versa, vice versa, which is all about Clive Barker movies, and we've done that. You know. Yeah. We, we wouldn't just... be very good Clive Barker podcast if we didn't talk about his movies. So we, right, we've done we, that already. We'll probably just go through them uh, very quickly and then move on to W and then yeah. X Y Z. So hopefully, what we if do everything... is we play the film and we talk about it on a commentary, but it's not a you know descriptive narration of the film it's a discussion and bringing up information about the film right right so we do trivia yeah. we we mention you know we maybe sometimes we riff a little bit on certain scenes sometimes we talk about the backstory of the movie and it's something that usually i recommend people uh, listen to while they're watching the movie but you can probably also listen to it when you're driving you're on your way to work or you know cooking dinner yeah. or something if you're familiar with a movie uh, already that's uh that's yes, our many commentary. of these are classic famous favorites of all of ours yeah and, and if you yeah. haven't seen the movie you should at least watch it first you know you can watch it with us or you can watch it first but you know we we do spoil the hell out of them so you know make make sure you you've seen them um we're also going to do um mule there's some really some rare movies that clive barker was involved with 
that we hadn't gotten to yet, uh, Jojo Baby and Mule Skinner Blues. Right. Which, so, what, are the, what are those about? Uh, Jojo Baby is about this guy. He's like a club kid and he makes, uh, you know, uh, costumes and stuff and he has his career. Um, I haven't watched it in a while, so I do need to go back to that. But uh, Jojo Baby, I think Clyde was attached to that as a producer. And I think the yeah. same thing was true for Mule Skinner Blues. Um, so he's those not are... involved. He didn't direct or write or no, no. In them. no, 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 no. Yeah, we're a little more in the weeds at this point. <laughs> yeah. But there's some um, good films still to come. There's some good good film titles. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Mule Skinner Blues is like a, you know, they call it a Southern Fried Duck. Uh, it's about trailer park residents who make their own horror movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, 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 I haven't watched that one yet. I'm saving that for when I prepare for the commentary. But Jojo Baby and Mule Skinner Blues are two kind of obscure doc, uh, documentaries that uh, slash mockumentary for Mule Skinner Blues uh, that will definitely do a commentary track for probably with Little Spark Films. Uh, we'll, we'll also be doing a commentary for um, for people who don't don't know uh, Dark Diddy's Presents. Uh, we'll be continuing our, our, our commentaries. For, there's a new, uh, a new episode of that one uh, as of November, I think it was. And that's uh, Dark Diddy's Amazon? Presents Dad. And so the, those are interesting because they're made by the people who made a, 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 an 11-hour documentary about Hellraiser 1 and 2 um, and with cast from Hellraiser 2. So and that's, that's on Amazon? That's yeah, they're on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. That's right. And the dad one is about like a zombie outbreak. So it, there's an ongoing story between all the uh, episodes. You can watch them separately, but if you watch them from the beginning, there's kind of an ongoing story and a, a behind the scenes villain and like woven this dark force. Woven throughout them. Yeah, woven throughout. So uh, yeah, well, dad is one of the, the, the latest one. I don't know if it's going to be the last one, but we'll definitely yeah. go through that. Um, yeah, I meant the most recent one, not the, not the final. Is right, that the one right. Barbie was talking about? On her? I think so, yeah, probably. I think uh, she's in it, isn't she? She she's de well yeah. she's definitely in uh, I think she's in the most recent one and she was definitely in the offer the first one. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so we'll also in addition to the commentaries we'll be doing more interviews. Uh, we're we're promising with our stretch goals we'll do six more interviews, and uh, we usually go over that. Um, but but that's something we're going to shoot for. Uh, Jericho Squad 77 is the other thing. Um, that's a Dungeons and Dragons game that we started la last year. We've done 10 episodes of that. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Uh, where I'm the DM, Jose plays, uh, plays a, a, a Eurytimek from, from the Second Dominion of Imagica. I am a sword, sword slinger, sword singer. I don't know. Swords, I'm a wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Sword, yeah. Sword singing wizard. Yeah. 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 With my ribbon yeah, and sword. We, and we have a, um, a from, we have a, another character that's a, that's a, from Weave World. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we have Smart. a night breed. Yeah. And that's where you get the, and this having no beginning will have no end. <laughs> right. And, and we have a seagull, uh, a talking seagull who's a, a nunciate. Yes, they've been exposed to the nuncio from Great and Secret Show, and they're yeah. uh, pretty useful. It's a pretty useful <laughs> yeah. little seagull. Yeah, he's a sorcerer. Yeah. Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, he, he was named after the, after the book character. And that's been his... really fun. You know, the, the first season we did, we had a, a good batch of, of combat and exciting adventures. We went through like these nine levels of hell and we ended up defeating this, this main enemy uh, at the end. And it was a great final combat. So 
I'm stoked. I, I enjoy this. I mean, the, the last one, uh, really, I, I, I put my soul on the line and then I had to make a deal <laughs> yeah. with the gulfs. And then I was like, Oh yeah. my God. And now I have to like, you know, get my revenge on this enemy of my family. And yeah, you know, it was, it was very interesting and everybody else did a great job. I mean, basically we had like uh catalina and joe manco we had brant who played uh, jonathan's uh, livingston seagull and it was just so much fun and you and your brother were the dms and uh you know yeah the the tech guy for d20 and uh roll 20 i mean and ryan, and ryan is the dungeon master for those of you right. who know what a yeah. dm is in the the mundane world out there <laughs> we had to deal with a lot of like meta gaming chat and a lot of uh <laughs> newbie uh, questions because a lot of us didn't play a uh, dnd before so that right right it's been yeah. a lot of fun I'm, what's I'm your totally feedback a... been like on it has has there been many people commenting or posting about uh not a lot i re there was one person that said i love this and um other than that i think in in um in polls and stuff it wasn't people's like it wasn't what people wanted the most but I don't know. You know, it's hard. I try to only pull people who actually listen to the podcast, but I you don't really control. I don't. We don't really control who's uh, who's answering those. But uh, we uh, we're planning on doing ten more episodes of the Jericho Squad, right, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, uh, ten more. Um, we do them about once a month because it's a lot of it's it's really a lot of editing and stuff. And plus, we have other stuff to do as a podcast, so we can't play it every week. But we do it once a month. Uh, it would probably be a little. It would be easier for the game if we did it once a week, because then people would remember the rules better uh, in between episodes. But, but so, uh, what else on the Kickstarter do you have? We've got. <clears throat> uh, we'll be talking about the Hellraiser Hulu movie that's coming out soon. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So that that's a big one, and we know that that's going to be coming out. Well, we're pretty sure that's going to be coming out in 2022, because mm -hmm. I think yeah. they've already finished shooting it uh there haven't been many images from it except for we know who the cast are um and we know it's going to be on hulu uh there's also an hbo tv series of hellraiser mm -hmm. uh but we don't know anything about it as far as but there's been no announcements it. about anything about casting about you know release date that's yeah, what lawrence it's... lawrence cuppin owns the rights for that one right uh partly uh, yeah yeah i think Partly, but I don't know if he's that involved with this one, but uh, definitely it's something that it's in pre-production, but the Hulu one, I'm sure it's going to come out in 2022. And when it does, we'll be able to, you know, talk about it, review it, maybe even make a commentary track for it, uh, just like we did for Books of Blood on Hulu, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, and we also, and we also keep up with the news. So we, every once in a while, we'll catch up on the news on our podcast. So if you want to know what's going on in, in Clive Barker news and Cl Clive Barker adjacent news, uh, then we keep up with that on the, on our podcast. So we'll also be talking about, you know, upcoming news about the Hellraiser Hulu TV show, you know, if, and when it, it, we get more news about it. I'm reaching out to the effects team. Oh, really? For the, the HBO one or the Hulu one? Both, but to the <clears throat> the Hulu one. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. So maybe we'll have some interviews to add to that. Uh, Promise six interviews this year. Uh, definitely will be something to look forward to. Yeah, it'd be interesting to announce who we can get. Yeah. 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 Uh, so another thing we were going to cover, um, one thing that I, I put this kind of late down in the stretch goals because it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but I thought it would be fun to do one more time, uh, the Duels of Blood. Yeah. where we could take all of the winners from the previous uh you know like the kind of a winner circle type of the thing and take the winners from all the previous years and, and hit them against off. each other have a bake off yeah 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 so it's kind of like a march madness type of tournament deal where people can vote on the website every 5 minutes or so you click on which one you want uh which one you want to win and then at the end of a week we get a tally of who's the winner and who's going to go on to go against uh against the others yeah, I remember Julia was a winner, and I think it was Shona it Chatter? Saucy. Wasn't Shona Saucy also? I think so. I'd have to go back and look at no, that. No, but... no, not Shona Saucy, but Onaka won in the Nightbreed one uh, right, last time. Right, right. 
Yeah. And I think that uh, we could get like the two runners up for each of the duels of blood. So that would be a more interesting like series. Of it, it, it's probably going to be more like eight runners up because yeah. you you start with 64 and then you have to work your way down to down to sure. one. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I want to see out of the winners who's going to really become, you know, the yeah. major winner. My money's on Julia, but I don't want to, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to start skewing the system here. Well, yeah. And, and that was one thing we did have. Um, we had big contingents of, of fans from uh, uh, pitted against each other. Um, well, Lori, if, if uh, she's listening. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's why, that's why Onaka was the winner of the Nightbreed one was big, basically because of Lori and her Simon Bamford fans. Uh, and, and Chatter also made it to second yeah. place on one of those. I remember. Well, and, uh, and uh, Pinhead, uh, the, uh, not the Doug Bradley Pinhead, but the Paul T. Taylor Pinhead won uh, one time because of the, yeah. uh, because of the fan, uh, his fan contingency. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. can awesome. be like campaigns by fans. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, it was we, fun. Uh, some people would make like a uh, little uh, fan oh, art stuff at one yeah, point that they would. Versions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah. Vote for uh, Dr. Chenard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was funny. We, you know, it, it was, it was, it's definitely a popularity contest, but sometimes people would get it confused and think it's like, well, who would win in a fight? Oh yeah, and, like uh, you know, not all of these Batman. characters are are fighters. Like <laughs> Superman versus Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or in some cases maybe like Superman versus you know a bus driver or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, what are some of the rewards that we have available here on this Kickstarter? Oh man, we have a ton, and yeah. um, so you know at the at the start here. You know, you'll get personal thanks on our podcast, on our blog and social media. Um, uh, we've got these uh, followers of the Pandorix toy maker stickers uh, donated by Eric Gross. And thank you yeah. so much, Eric. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, do not trust the smiling world uh, posters, which uh, say you got those from Century Guild a few years back when yeah, they were representing right. Clive Barker's art. And yeah, so I think, we still we still have more of those. I think these were meant to be part of the Clyde Barker Society uh, merch that was going to start coming out. But then that didn't happen. And so yeah. we uh, we still have a few. Uh, and uh, yeah, they've been a staple of our Kickstarters. So you can still get some of those and put them on your wall. Yeah, they're, they're neat. They've got a Clive Barker sketch and then a little hand scrawled uh, note that says, do not trust the smiling world, my friend. Uh, and it's longer than that, but but yeah. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, we've got t-shirts. Um, so a, a more, the most, the latest, most recent announcement was uh, Ed, Ed and Nina, you guys made a new Cenobium design for us. Well, it's not a new design, right? It's a, it's, yes, it's, a design. it's, it's uh, published. It's new and old. <laughs> it was published yeah. in an issue of Cenobium. I think issue 14, but I didn't check before we started this. <laughs> I should have checked it. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's a Cenobium uh, Cenobite uh, yes. based on a yeah. Nirasawa design, right? Yeah, he sculpted a, a little uh, a Cenobite of his own design. And uh, I did a, a pen and uh, ink uh, and brush drawing of it. It looks amazing. I, I'm really happy with this one. This is really fantastic. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to wearing this T-shirt. Cool. Yeah, me too. Yes, I'm going to get it as image. soon as I can. Maybe so we'll have that uh, here exclusively on the uh, on the Kickstarter for our backers, uh, and um, so so watch out for that. And um, and another, um, we've got a fundraiser nine celebrations design, and that Jose has been working on. Yeah, it's going to be uh, uh, like a. a it's going to be like a Lylesburg, stylized Lylesburg with a flowing cape. And then inside the cape, you'll have our logo and the 10th anniversary, 2012 to 2022. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll announce that when, when that's completed. Uh, but it's looking good. It's looking good. Yeah. And, and, and a Jericho Squad 77 <laughs> t-shirt design. So that's got all of the, uh, the character art by Asya and Yordanova with the characters all kind of standing next to each other. And and I love that one. I've been I, I want to get one of those for myself too. And Ryan, are we going to have stickers of that too in our store on uh, T Public? 
we yeah okay that's a good cool. idea yeah, because I've been yeah. uh, at the store recently. I was looking for stickers to put on my new little Chromebook that I got for Christmas. I was like, uh, do we have Jericho Squad stickers? I was like, oh, we don't have those yet. Yeah, but that would yeah. be a great idea. I would love to put that on my computer. Do, 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 do. Newsflash. I just got a text. <laughs> my contact about the Hellraiser new Hulu special effects oh. just texted me and said, I got the email from you know them saying that they'll be willing to talk to me so i'll be letting you guys know more about that okay oh, excellent awesome. yeah. wow look at that breaking news in a kickstarter <laughs> video <laughs> yeah uh we're gonna have uh some paperbacks clyde barker paperbacks that you can also get in certain tiers yeah. right sacrament everville uh a cassette tape of everville uh we'll have some hellraiser comic books uh yeah from the Nightbreed old Breed comic books yeah Hellraiser um, Beast Theory. friend Aiden, I believe. Yes, exactly. Uh, Aiden Fowlin. And uh, and Dread fanzines he also provided. Um, yeah, those are so, rare pen's teeth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. I don't have a complete set myself. So, yeah, those are a great opportunity if you're a collector. You can find the Dread newsletters. Uh, you can get the issues you need. Yeah, I don't and, know if people uh, even know what those are. They're these little half, you know, like digest size newsletters mostly black and white but there is some red ink on some of them and people like pete atkins wrote stuff for them nick vince you know it was really cool little magazine yeah. back in the day oh yeah i i collected those uh from starting like 1990 or so wherever i could find them um yeah, Zenobium was being published dread was being published you know that right really back in the day yeah. yeah and i think there was a third one and i can't remember what it was the lost souls newsletter right that's it yeah i think yeah. that's the one yeah, yeah. And then there was this thing called hell breed that came out oh yeah did. that's right just only, two only issues. Yeah. issues yeah yeah, yeah. I've got yeah. Those, but, but, yeah. But, but those are not part of the kickstarter so we also have a barker cast mug that you can get uh is it with our logo ryan yeah yeah with the, yeah, the pinhead yeah. peliquin logo you know I kind was, of a wraparound yeah. design we got and some those were popular posters. last year yeah, we got some torture posters signed by Paul T. Taylor. Uh, yeah, Pinhead yeah. From so Judgment. For people that don't know, it stars, like you said, P Paul T. Taylor, who is Pinhead from Hellraiser Judgment, written by Paul Kane, uh, who is a Hellraiser expert, and it's based on his short story. And the movie was made by our friends at Little Spark Films, uh, Joe Manco and Catalina Carida. Yeah. And um, we also have posters. Did, we, did you say the posters already? Yes, yeah, the you torture did. posters. So in addition to the Taylor. posters, I'm sorry, we also have download codes for the movie. So you can download the movie and watch it, which is yeah. uh, it's a pretty brutal movie if you want to cool. watch it. It's That's it's brutal. awesome. You should check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story. Um, we got some uh we got some other things like an autographed photo of Clive. We got a, a still page from the original Nightbreed press kit. Uh, so that's that's pretty interesting. It's got some black and white still photos of the uh, uh, production. Um, there's a Fangoria number 141, another one that's number 82 that covers Hellraiser 2 and as well as 78, which covers uh, Hellraiser 2 as well. And then we have some Dread, uh, Dread fanzines. Like you said, we have numbers 2, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 12. These are going to yeah. be available in certain tiers. Um, and the also, summer special. Yeah, the Dread Summer Special. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, I'm looking at that one actually. <laughs> and 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 our our friend and uh, and uh, and co-host and news blog writer Rob Reidenauer donated uh, Memory, Prophecy, and Fantasy books one and three, the uh, the the biography books by Phil and Sarah Stokes. So thank you so much, Rob. Um, that, you know, that, if, those you, if you missed out on those, they're great. Yeah, I think the first one is is out of print right now. So it is, this is a yeah. good opportunity to get uh, Memory, Prophecy, and Fantasy Volume 1 by Phil and Sarah. Uh, there's going to be a, a U.S. hardcover of Morningstar, signed first edition, uh, which was donated by Peter Atkins, right? Yeah, yeah. By, donated yeah. by Peter Atkins and also signed by Peter Atkins. Which Yay, is, uh, Pete! Lucky yeah. for us that it was, wasn't signed by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> And the signed the Hellraiser Bloodline script paperback that just came out by Encyclopocalypse Publications. So you can also get that one from Peter Atkins himself. Yeah, that's uh, hot off the presses. That's a great news. Yeah, yeah, I know. I got two of them. 
I got yeah, I got and, and another money. big one from also donated by Peter Atkins, uh, the Hellbound Heart 20th anniversary advanced reader copy. Uh, also, you know, also oh, signed by Peter nice, Atkins. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure that'll be very popular. <laughs> oh, that's that's hard. Yeah, it, it works when you put it close to you. There we go. Nice. Yeah. And uh, what else do we have? Oh, yeah. The Pyramid Gallery is offering a, a box, is donating a box for the oh, Kickstarter Lament as well. Configuration. Yeah, yeah a so mu Lament musical configuration. Lament configuration where you, you twist the little the circle on the top and it, and it, plays, a, it plays music like a music oh, Like box. in the Hellbound Heart story. That's yes. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So amazing boxes. I totally recommend them. And uh, he's been very generous in donating to our Kickstarter. So thank you. Max Lichter, Assistant uh, Gallery Administrator of Pyramid Gallery. Thank you, Max. And, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Max. And uh, from Phil and Sarah Stokes of, uh, of Clive Barker Archive and Clive Barker Info, we have uh, Imaginer 5 and 6 um, still in uh, shrink wrap. Yeah. Yeah, Those so thank great. you so much, Phil and Sarah. And they donated uh, more than that, uh, but, but we sold other ones last year. And and this year we we have those two, and I'm donating my uh, deluxe artist's copy of Imaginer Four that's in the tray case. Wow, nice! Yeah, those tray cases edition are really deluxe. Yeah, they're nice. Well, and those um, some treasured items there. And, and our biggest one uh, is from Don Bertram, and thank you so much, Don. This means a ton to us. Don Bertram has been a, a a huge part of our podcast and a, and a sponsor and he's he's helped us out a lot um great guy. But he do, he donated a clive barker original sketch wow cool yeah that's rare that is so rare yeah and and as you're watching this i don't know we've been talking a long time so hopefully somebody didn't buy it while you were watching us talk on the video <laughs> today was the day it went up uh no well not while we're recording it. Oh, yes, <laughs> no, we're still recording the Kickstarter video, yeah. but it'll it'll go up pretty soon after this. So yeah, you gotta you gotta be quick, buddy. You gotta be quick. Yeah, wow. right. Wow. Yeah, it's the magic of special video. Piece. Special piece, boy. Um, but yeah, and we're also off offering advertising. Um, we've got you know five episodes, ten episodes, or twenty episodes. Uh, you can get advertised on our podcast. Um, we've had really good luck with our sponsors. Um, we've had some really cool people. We've had um, Don Bertram celebrate imagination, uh, which you know is is uh, is his uh, his way of of giving back to the community. Uh, he his art um, supports the Texas or in Texas Children's Cancer Center the arts and medicine program. Uh, wow. We've had. Uh, we've had um dark regions press as a sponsor which is great they've they've published some clive barker books yeah we've um, had jordy calendar jordy calendar yeah which is a japanese yeah. calendar app that was fun when uh, <laughs> um so yeah and and we're looking forward to finding out who you know who we get this year um and uh yeah and and that's it for for our goals and in our and our um and our backer rewards. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you've been watching this on the Kickstarter, you could pause right here and, uh, and go, go uh, support the podcast, get some cool stuff. And we'll be waiting for you to unpause. And then we're going to talk about a uh, decade in review. Sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It's been a great 10 years stuff that we did that I even forgot we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so so decade in review. Normally, at the first of the year, we do, uh, you know, we what we what we had planned originally was to do twenty twenty one in review because we always do review the past year. But since we're celebrating ten years, we thought, why not decade in review? And we'll go over the whole, you know, the whole of the podcast since we started. The whole spiel. The whole spiel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not going to take a long time with this, but we're just going to mention some <laughs> yeah, of the things yeah. that we, we thought were around, really cool and bounce yeah. around all over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, so w when we started, um, actually, I was at uh, Texas Frightmare Weekend in 2011, and I saw that you know Clive had um, Clive was was kind of struggling with his health a little bit. He 
his his neck was twisted and i was talking to mark miller about it and that was when i first met mark miller in person and he said that clive worked so much that he was kind of uh he he was sleeping in his chair and his head was going like this and it kind of got stuck that way and it's like oh my god he does so much and and it, it uh, he does so much for us and it made me think like how what could we do to sort of give back and and i and um I spent a lot of time that day. They let me they let me hang out at the table and talk to Mark and Clive while the whole rest of the line went through. So I spent the entire day hanging out with Mark and Clive Barker and stuff. And I think it was also because I had so much stuff to sign that I was like, oh, my God, they, they were, they you know, they like, let's let you wait until everybody else gets through because, you know, I had. I had a whole duffel bag full of stuff. <laughs> and so in that and, and, and I just kind of started to feel like, you know, what I've done a podcast before I had an unsuccessful puppet video podcast and I thought, you know, why not? This is, this is something that we could do. And so we, we, uh, we put it together on the, um, from members of the, of the, of a, of an online forum, um, timewins.com slash Clive Barker, right? It was the, um, the fifth dominion, the, the fifth dominion. Right. And, and that still exists as a Facebook group. So go check out, Fifth Dominion Clive Barker fans. Uh, yeah, and there's a website too, I think. It's Clive Run by Roger com. Boys. Yep. Is it still around? I, I think th- so. I, don't, I think it's gone. I, I mean, I think at least the domain name is, has expired. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and don't confuse it because there's another cl- Facebook group called Clive Barker fans, but Rogers was first. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Fifth Dominion Clive Barker fans, go check that out. Um but yeah, so that was our that was our Facebook, or I mean not our Facebook group. That was our our uh, forum predates Facebook, and um, we we uh, we got together on there to talk about Clive Barker stuff, and and I kind of recruited uh, recruited out of there, and and Jose was the one who stuck around the whole time. You've been here yeah. since the very first episode. Sure, I I was the one who was like, hey, you know, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it, you know, and and uh, you know helped out as much as I could. And we had some first episodes. So uh, I just, uh, I I decided, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. I used to have a blog called Hellraiser Gallery. Uh, It was hellraisergallery.blogspot.com. And Uh, I try to put up some news and stuff there. And I try to make some reviews and whatnot, but you know, it was, uh, it was just me. And it was kind of like, you know, uh, it, took a long time and I was still in college at that time. And I was like, well, you know, it kind of lapsed after about a year or so, but I was like, I always wanted to do something like that with, uh, with, you know, like I even had like a couple episodes of an audio podcast that I had put up on some website. One of them, I read uh, an excerpt of the Hellraiser three unfilmed script and Peter Atkins actually said, Oh, I've listened to it. That was, that was interesting. That was cool. I was like, wow. He he didn't say cease and desist. No, no, no. (laughs) I read the cool. uh, excerpt of when uh, uh, the 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 priest is uh, resurrecting Pinhead, and Pinhead comes out of the vat and talks to the priest, uh, and and uh, I offer you redemption, and then he chains him up. So I altered my voice a little bit with like some effects. <laughs> it, it was a whole thing, <laughs> but cool. uh, it was just early start of trying to come up with some idea of what later would become more crystallized in in our, in the project that, you know, we, we founded and created. So that was so cool. In, in those early days, I, I used Apple iWeb uh, to publish the podcast, which basically Apple had a web editor and you drag the file into the bottom of the, like the, the, the audio file into the bottom of your blog post and Apple would sort of magically shove it into iTunes. Hmm. And so when Apple said, Hey, we're not doing this anymore. I'm like, Oh my God, we don't have, we don't have a web host. I don't know how to make podcasts, you know, the, because basically they've sort Quickly of babied learn. us. It was a crutch, right? Learn, sure. Quick, <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. We had to, we had to learn how to do podcasts all of a sudden when Apple cut us off <laughs> and, but you know, it's fair. I mean, what they were, they were doing that for free and all of a sudden podcasts blew up and they're like, we can't support this anymore. Right. Um, but uh, the other thing that that was really big in our very first year uh, that sort of kept us going was Occupy Midian, um, and that explain that was that. huge. Yeah, explain that. 
we'll do it in sort of a nutshell because if we start talking about it too much we'll go on forever right right just for the but but nightbreed uh nightbreed of course as a lot of clive barker fans know nightbreed had some real difficulty in the post-production with the uh, producers and and particularly 20th century fox not really understanding what clive was going for or not wanting to uh, and 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 sort of fashioning it into and marketing it as a slasher film right and and so occupy midian was it's not a new movement right there's always been a fan movement to get clive's original vision of nightbreed remade and so you know find the I, film elements i would say that there was individual fans that would pester clive and every convention asking him when yeah. is that 25 minutes of uh nightbreed gonna come out oh yeah i i was one of those fans yeah. i did that and he said oh it's gonna be huge it's gonna be 25 yeah. minutes longer and it's yeah. gonna be on laser disc yeah and so in 2009 mark miller was doing a spring cleaning at seraphin and they found some uh, VHS tapes that said, you know, Nightbreed. And then they, when they saw them, they realized that these were early cuts uh, that contained a lot of footage that never made it into the theatrical cut. And so for a couple of years, uh, you know, they kept releasing things through uh, Revelation saying, well, you know, there's this and there's that and this other tape we also found. And there's like a number, music number with uh, Ann Bobby singing. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. here's a little a little yeah. stop motion of Mezik yeah. Mool and, and Dia, Dia Dara, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and so eventually, eventually you went to one of the conventions where they actually screened for the first time the whole Cabal cut, right? Yeah. It still yeah. had all the... Uh, all the reel ins and outs and, you know, lots of lots of stuff. It was completely raw cut of the movie that had repeated stuff. Or whatever. It, it was, film. yeah, it was a uh, Russell Charrington and Jimmy Johnson had mixed together um, that, that VHS footage with a, a, with a US DVD of Nightbreed to, to make an extended version that they called the cabal cut. Right. And over the next two years, they kept refining that and, uh, didn't you actually re see this the raw screening of the tape though? Didn't you also? No, go no, some... I didn't go to no. that. That was at 2009. Okay. That it, was uh, before our yeah. podcast. Yeah, that was a so, uh, horror hound 2009. And so, just that. to put this in a nutshell, uh, when that cabal cut was screened, and Bobby uh, one night was talking, and she said, uh, "Someone said we should make a we should." Uh, she was talking to Morgan us. Creek. She was talking to to me. Yeah, yeah. it was in our it was on our podcast on our yeah, episode number like three or something. Craig Sheffer said something. Occupy Wall Street and stuff had happened. Yeah, and Craig yeah. Sheffer said something like we should occupy Morgan Creek, and then Bobby said occupy Midian, and and yeah. that's you know that night and I that's think when, when it was born. Yes. Yeah. And so there was a petition that we did in in 2012. We we got thousands and thousands of signatures, and uh, it was sent over to Clive Barker and Morgan Creek, and 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 so eventually they they've agreed to let the Cabal cut, you know, tour around the world, about Four dozens fans. and dozens of of screenings, and uh, eventually they saw that there was enough interest, and they they put out the director's cut eventually, yeah. maybe three a couple of years later i think yeah, yeah well and when she said occupy midian i kind of knew that this was big and so i got jose and roger on the on skype you know from my hotel at the convention where i just talked to her and i said hey this is big and ann bobby has repeated this a couple of more times this because I, so i think she knew it was big and i said if we don't do something with this somebody else is going to do it in a way that it's just going to fizzle out just like the last time you know somebody had a petition yeah. Right. I mean, we got we've got a movie that's that's uh, being screened. Um, we've got social media. We've got a right. podcast and we and we know the people who are behind the we know the people who are behind the uh, the new cabal cut yes. and who people who work at Seraphim so we can make it official. So I think we can do it right. And that and that that was where. um and by getting official people involved and by doing like this sort of multi-prong attack instead of saying like, hey, there's a petition, you know, out there, you can go sign, which is what happened before. And it didn't really go anywhere. So so this time we had uh, we we it was lucky, you know, that a lot of things were in place to make this work. Stars and aligned. Occupy Median was successful. The stars aligned. Yeah. <laughs> 
the stars aligned and that was a great uh, a springboard for us to start getting interviews on our podcast we interviewed people like Ann Bobby you know we had uh, 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 Nicholas Simon Benz, Bamford, Simon Bamford yeah. uh, Pete Atkins uh, Pete Atkins yeah that was later but uh, uh, Catherine Chevalier Sa- uh, 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 um, Shuna Sassy herself uh, yeah. uh, Christina and- Corkendale uh, yep. he ross so that was a very exciting year because we were just getting started on interviews and and we were like um yeah you know and we and got bobby better and, and craig sheffer were my very first interviews ever and they were in person and i was like i was nervous out of my mind i was you know and you can definitely hear it on the podcast sure sure uh, well, you're going to start somewhere. You got to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so for me, 2012, uh, good moments were the launch of the podcast, the interviews that we did, uh, the petition that you know I wrote up with you guys, and then it just blew up. Uh, yeah. The Mo- Mad Monster Party. A, you did it. Hang on. The, mo- the a- Mad Monster. Let me go through my my stuff. The Mad Monster Party screening that that you went to, right? And then uh, our series of episodes about the movies that never were. You remember that? Yeah, that oh, was yeah. Best stuff. Yeah, that what were you going to say, Ed? Just the fact that you guys eventually were even on a commentary track on an official release of the Clive Barker DVD. You know, yeah, in, yeah, in we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to yeah. that year. Yeah. yeah. In 2017. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what were, your, what were some of your favorite moments, Ryan? Oh yeah, I mean that that was it. I mean, uh, I guess Mad Monster Party for me mm-hmm. was the big one. I mean, that was, uh, w- you know, we didn't just have a, a Clive Barker podcast; we had a cause, and um, and that was in Chicago or no? Where was that? That that was in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. Ah. In uh, yeah, in 2012, it was we were still in our single digits for episodes. And you, so I think it was episode Alaska. nine. Actually, was the first interviews from that one. You flew all the way from Alaska to attend. Yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. Used your miles. <laughs> yeah, I used my airline miles. I had I could fly anywhere for free back then because of all my rental properties, and I had yeah. put all my uh, heating oil deliveries on the Alaska Airlines card. That's so these cool. days I can't quite do that anymore. 2013 marked our first video episode with "Show Your Stuff." Uh, where <laughs> yeah. you and I was in Portugal and you were in Alaska and we were showing off the stuff that we had in our collection. And I yep. had like a Midian key and you had all your yeah. stuff. And, and it was, uh, yeah. Other people were supposed to show up and also show off their stuff, but that didn't work out. Yeah. We did that on a Google <laughs> hangout. Yeah. Uh, and then 2013, we also got to interview Barbie wild, which I, I, I love her so much. And we got to talk, uh, uh, made some podcast episodes about the Hellraiser movies. That's when we yeah. started talking about Hellraiser 1, 2, whatever. And and the first news of uh, Leviathan, the documentary, came out. So yeah. this very was when smart. the product. Very, very smart. smart. Yeah. Yeah. And the first Tales, uh, Clyde Barker's first Tales book came out in uh, 2013. So, or was announced. So that was uh, that was also exciting to see a new book coming from Clyde Barker. Yeah, from stories that people had not read before. They were really old, uh, old stories from when Clyde was young, uh, being published for the first time. Um, 2014 uh, was big because that was the year that the official director's cut of Nightbreed came out. Um, so uh, Jose and I were invited to the premiere at the Crest Westwood in, uh, in, in, um, in Los Angeles. Yeah, that was amazing. That's when we got to video for that too, right? Right, right. We have some. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, 2014 was the year of the Lord of Illusions release Blu-ray. Imagine One was announced, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah. And and, 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 yeah, Imagine One had just come out. Uh, I brought mine with me to the Crest Westwood and and made um, and made um, Clive. (laughs) Mark, Mark Miller. No, no. Um, from Century Guild, I had made Thomas Nagovin. Thomas Nagovin, thank you. My mind just blanked for a second. I made I made Thomas Nagovin sign mine, and he was like, "Oh, no one ever asks me to sign this." <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Boom Nightbreed comics came out because it was yeah. the year of Nightbreed. Uh, uh, the Leviathan Kickstarter uh, was put up, which was very exciting for everybody. And the Midnight Meat Train book. Uh, was announced so right right yeah that was a great year full of stuff you know things were rolling I again one, i think that that was night dark regions press wasn't it the, i think so yeah yeah 
Yeah, so that's 2014. Uh, 2015 was a big year because after a long hiatus, Clive Barker released another novel, and not just any novel, but one that people had been howling about Scarlet for Gospel. a decade. The Scarlet, <laughs> the Scarlet Gospels. Gospels. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had the Scarlet Gospels and we had uh, Rob started a new feature that was really awesome called Beyond the Limits, where he would talk about some of the paintings of Clyde Barker and what that meant to him and how he interpreted them. Uh, we had the Thief of Always Anniversary Edition 25th Anniversary come out, which was the most beautiful book I have yeah. ever owned in my life. Me too. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. so grateful for getting a copy of that. Right. I saw the history of the devil theater play in, in uh, the Phoenix theater. Uh, oh, that's cool. That's Cause I had just moved to Arizona that day. Uh, I think in April, you said something like uh, April fools was uh, Joe is leaving the podcast. We wish him well. He's yeah. moving to Arizona. Oh. And people, people were flipping their minds. It's like, no. Yeah. And, and, and we, and we had another, uh, another April fools that was a little more uh, that kind of spun out of control yeah, and we didn't dicey. mean that was dicey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had, um, we, we, I had this idea and I told Rob, asked Rob if he could write it, but he, you know, that the Scarlet gospels was going to be delayed until 2017 or something like that. And so he made this story and they, the, the publisher freaked they out it. and they wrote, they, they wrote to it. Mark Miller and they said, Hey, What's going on? Where are they getting this information from? Did it come from you? And he goes, no, it didn't come from us. And, and so he called me up on the phone. He's like, what is this about? I'm like, look at the date that we wrote that. And, and so just recently to reviewing for this episode, I went back and read that. And Rob wrote something kind of mean on there. I didn't realize that he had a, a blurb that the reason for the delay was because of poor early reviews. Oh no! <laughs> I was like, oh god! You made like a, a post of yourself, like face palming, like we we have to do a uh, yeah. Know, that was Rob. Retraction. Rob face palming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah Rob wrote, uh, "This is me. This is my face when I heard the news." And he like, yeah. Was like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good old Rob. I miss him. Hi, Rob. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> uh, uh, 2015, we reached episode 100, where Clive Barker answered some of our questions uh, in writing. Uh, and the Scarlet Box was came out, I think. The Scarlet Box, the uh, Arrow. Uh, the uh, oh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was so. big. Yeah. yeah, that was huge. Yeah. yeah. I love that, that, uh, that those copies. That and has we finally Hellraiser reviewed one through four four right or three one through one three. three three yeah yeah and we also reviewed leviathan the documentary the 11 hours and the three dvds right. yeah you know? yeah and and our 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 uh our cover picture for that is kind of a joke it's two guys two skeletons watching a tv because it took so long to watch <laughs> right. yeah, yes yeah. yes well and and to be fair it's not really an 11 hour documentary it's just when yeah. you watch all the special features and stuff it ends up adding up to that much time sure. right because they have sure, like a yeah. special thing on just hellraiser 3 and stuff like that yeah exactly but it is i mean even the main the main movie you know is really long if you watch the dvd of it you right. know if you, like you there, there's a shorter version right. that got included in the scarlet box that's only two hours yeah um there's different versions of it according to where yeah. you see it, you know. Yeah, and but the Kickstarter version was the longest, and that, that's yes. what we watched. Yeah, the, the Julia hours. mattress cover slip case. Yeah. Uh, 2017 saw uh 2016, I'm sorry, 2016 saw Tonight Again, a book of uh stories and poems by Clyde Barker that they uh you know Ben Mears kind of edited that with Mark Miller and they put it out. So that was a great book. Uh that I think it's out of print, but you can still get the Kindle version. Uh, the Claude Barker archive website was launched in 2016. So that was a huge deal. Phil and because, Sarah. Yeah. Phil and Sarah. Yeah. Again, yes. Clive Barker archive.com. Uh, Imaginer two, three, and four came out. So our cup runneth over with yeah. good stuff. Uh, we interviewed Simon Sacy, uh, the, the artist who designed. Well, I think Imaginer two, I, Imaginer two had come out like a year after the first one. I think that we just covered them. Or we talked about him at that time, right? Maybe, yeah. Okay, probably. Yeah. But three and four came out. Uh, yeah. And then Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell by Paul Kane came out too, which was a great book. I really enjoyed that episode oh, yeah. where we had Paul Kane with us and reviewed a Magica. So that was a big highlight for me. Oh yeah, and we had uh, Ben Warren on our on our um, podcast with us to talk about a Magica, and he made uh, he composed a musical theme for a Magica called the Cradle of Chersemet. 
Yes. And we we've he's even allowed us to use that in our opening um opening um cr opening credits or intro for the Jericho Squad. Right. That's right. what that he, is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um it, people should check out uh, check him out in his music. And um what so 2016. Oh, the the Duels of Blood started for the first time. Um we interviewed Simon Sace uh and you know it was uh it was just a short time after that he passed um but we got to talk to simon sace about his designs for yes. the puzzle box for hellraiser and Rest the um the mask Rest yeah the mask that he made for for um dr decker dr decker and nightbreed which i wore on our 300th episode <laughs> yes <laughs> that's yeah. right that's right and uh, I'm not what? one of them. I'm here to destroy them. Yes. And, uh, uh, can we go to 2017? That's the year that Hellraiser Judgment came out. Uh, yeah. The Last Illusion by Fiddle Black came out as well, the hardcover yeah. book, which was, a, a, again, for someone who loves Lord of Illusions, this was the book to get. Uh, the Thief of Always uh, turned 25. So that was an amazing, an amazing book to to review. Uh, and Rawhead Rex came out in 4K uh, restoration. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that 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 one that one sort of threw us all for a loop. We're like, oh my god, really? Who put yeah. that? Um, <laughs> it, but, but you know, I got it, and it it looks gorgeous for what it is. Who put, who <laughs> it's still Rawhead out? Rex, but oh my god, you know that was awesome. And uh, I, I still think that they should have thrown in um, transmutations for free on that one. Who put that out? Kino um, Lorber. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Kino Lorber. That's right. Um, they put that out. They even found the guy who uh, played Rawhead Rex was like a Swedish ski instructor, and they interviewed him for the disc really. Or something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And um, in in 2017, Seraphim. Uh, put out sort of a final ver well it would end up being the final version of the cabal cut on blu-ray in a limited edition with permission by morgan creek and clive barker and uh and jose and i we got to do a comment an audio commentary on that right. blu-ray and there's only 250 copies pressed no right? there's a thousand copies oh yeah 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 there were 250 originally and then the manufacturer said we can't we can't just give you 250 you have to buy a thousand Oh, I see. So eventually yeah. some came out, but they did not come with all the extras and all the signed slip right, cases and stuff right. like that. Yeah. But, you know, but that's cool. um, you guys are on a thousand discs out there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we it was great to do that commentary yeah. track. It was a lot of work. And uh, to this day, it's one of the things I'm the most proud of. Uh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and the the it it. it when we when we stay when we started out we kept on restarting but then once we got into the flow of it it really flowed really well and yeah. if anybody anybody that doesn't have that uh you can also listen to it it's one of our episodes so you can listen to it too um i i'm proud of it also i think it came out great what season yeah. did you put, put that in uh it would be the 2017 season so um is that like eight i think is it eight A season six playlist? on the youtube playlist was season yeah because we're starting season 11 right now okay. um so it's the 2017 year yeah season six six okay and the body book was announced also in 2017 oh yeah yeah so that was you know also interesting that uh another you know extra packed edition uh involving the body politic and uh, I think there was another story, but, you know, the body book. So that was also announced. And uh, that brings us to 2018, right? Yeah, 2018. Uh, one, one of our Kickstarters like this one, uh, we, we saved up enough money to go to Texas Frightmare Weekend. And, and 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 originally we had budgeted for Jose and I to go then, you know, but then we're then, you know, Rob and Marcus and David all wanted to go too. like, I'm sorry, we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't know that you wanted to do this and we didn't budget for it, but they, you know, they paid their way, their own way. And, and, um, and yeah, we got, it. yeah, that was really nice. And it was so cool to meet, to meet them in person. Oh, that's absolutely. Great. It was awesome. Yeah. And you, you guys know, we, got a got an Airbnb and yes, Catalina and Joe in person, Joe Manco. 
Yeah, well, they they, they filmed our, our Cenobite roundtable for us. Yes, yes, that All was the amazing. Actors in a one hotel room. Woo-hoo. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and and they they uh, they sat through Barn of the Blood Llama with us. <laughs> <laughs> a, a movie that opens with Clive Barker reading a text, and then he's not in it for the rest of the movie. Yeah, he was sort of hijacked into that into yeah. that making into that movie. I don't think he you know he meant to. <laughs> the hellbound heart audio production came out uh i think it was paul adapted Kane? by paul kane yes yeah. uh in in england so they came out and pete imagine, on that he's on that <laughs> i think so yeah yeah uh, imagine yeah, right. five came out in 2018 as well uh you guys actually made your first appearance in our podcast we oh. interviewed you guys uh <laughs> oh, about yeah. synobium Wow. And we had Sorka Neeline uh, from Dark Imaginer as well. Uh, it was a really good interview that we did. And this is when also Candyman remake news started hitting the uh, the websites. You know, that Candyman was going to have a, a, a reboot remake. or yeah. a remake or a new movie for Candyman was being, uh, you know, from planned. Jordan Peele. Yes, yeah. 2018. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's when it first started. So uh, that was pretty good. Pretty good year. Yeah. It almost brings us up to date. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then so 2019, uh, we had uh, Dark Diddy's Mrs. Wiltshire. So th- in the previous year, they had um, the offer, right? That had the Hellbound cast, and that got our attention. We're like, hey, all these people, all these Hellraiser people that are our friends, are together in uh, in this movie. You know, so we and, and I, at that time, it was only available as like a Kickstarter, um, as a Kickstarter thing, I think, is if you're a backer from a Kickstarter. So right. that was before it was on Amazon Prime and before it was part of a series. It was just a movie. Um, but now, like but pilot. then, um, like but then they made a second episode, yeah. Mrs. Wiltshire, uh, where Simon Bamford dressed as an old woman, and wow. it was really it was really powerful and moving. Yeah. Really good makeup too. I understand. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. M- might have been Stuart Conran. I forgot, but I think it might have been Stuart Conran. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, what a tour de force for Simon Bamford. It was a really amazing like episode. It made me cry, and we got Gary Smart and Simon Bamford to join us to talk about that. It was such an amazing episode. Yeah, uh, we did the. Uh, they did the audio commentary with us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, we so did. Uh, this... We started covering Aberat, right? We did the Aberat one and two e- um, episodes to talk about uh, the Aberat books, which we had put off for quite a while because you know we kept hoping that Aberat four would come out uh, by the time we got to him. Yeah, and 2019 was also the year that David S. Goyer was announced as being part of the reboot for uh, Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. So that's what. Yeah, which would eventually become the Hulu project. Yes, uh, but that was exciting because David S. Goyer, you know, he's very re- well known for all kinds of things. Marvel for doing, yeah. you know, uh, Superman for doing Blade for doing, you know, yeah, tons of stuff. Sure. You know? So it was exciting to hear that this project finally was going forward with some some serious talent behind it. Um, we interviewed Jeff Brower, who was the sculptor for a lot of the kits from Screamin. That's Yay. right. That was an, another interesting episode that we and recorded. that was thanks to Ed, thanks to you and Nina for for yeah. uh, getting us in touch oh, with. We him. hooked you up. Jeff yeah, is a great guy. Jeff is a great guy. And I got to meet uh, Paul T. Taylor at this gluten free bakery in Arizona in my <laughs> in the town where I was <laughs> living. Right. Uh, yeah, which spooky was Chandler, swirls, right? Spooky swirls. Yeah, yeah, I got to see that. I got to see a whole bunch of things. Like it was a bakery slash horror museum, so there was a lot of props in wow. there. And you know, world, man. hey, wait a minute. Did, yeah. we, I have to back up for a second. We, we, when we talked about 2013, we didn't talk about your wedding. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah 2013 was the year that Jose got married to Sarah and you moved to, uh, you moved to the United States to California yeah. at that time. Yes. We made a special and episode about it. Yeah. We did a whole episode, Jose's wedding extravaganza. Yeah, you were there. You're you're my best man there. It was yeah. really amazing. We it was the first time we got to meet each other in person, and it was uh, yeah. in Vegas of all places. So what a what a time! What a what a year for me! It was a big year of change. A very exciting year. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I'm sorry, I, that was 2013. Now we're on. We're we're talking about 2019 right 19. now. 19. So. Yes, yes, yeah. we're getting close to. Now you're uh, an American. Yeah, yeah. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? What was that from? That was the third Desperado movie, right? Oh, could be. Yeah. Once upon a time in Mexico. 
in 2020, uh, we kept on talking about Imaginer. So at this point, I think we did Imaginer 5, 6, and 7 with Marcus Williams. Yeah. So great series of episodes where we, we covered Imaginer pretty much since the beginning. Thanks to uh, Phil and Sarah. Thanks to Phil yeah. and Sarah, of course. And, and, and we books. continued on the A to Z commentaries. I don't remember if we did those in 2019 also, but it seems like it's taking a lot longer than we imagined. I don't know mm -hmm. why. I mean, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. We should have realized that it would take a while to get through all those, but that's yeah. fine. I'm having a blast, <laughs> you know, doing these movies with you and, Ed yeah. and, and Nina and other people. Sometimes it's, it's great. I love going to, it opens up the podcast a little bit more to other things other than just Clive Barker, but, yeah. uh, they're also, also my favorite to listen to yeah. when, when I'm I've, I've I'm, I'm behind on listening to our own podcast because I hear them when we do them. I hear them when I edit them and then I'm listening to other people's podcasts. And then it's like when I run out of those, I'll go, oh, I'll listen to one of ours. Yeah. But whenever I get to one of our uh, one of our um, mm -hmm. audio commentaries, they're always my favorite to listen to. And I think part of it is that I don't edit the middle, the, the main portion of it. So it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's new. It's like a yeah. free for all then his run. Yeah, sure, I, sure. I, I, one time, uh, Halloween, I think, I think it was this year's Halloween or was it last year's Halloween? I don't know. We did a special Halloween episode with Pete, remember? Yeah, and I yeah. listened to uh, to the Halloween commentary track and I was watching Halloween on TV and I was like, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> I was having fun listening <laughs> to our, yeah. to our uh, commentary track. I was like, that's the first time I'm listening to one of our commentary yeah. tracks while watching the movie again. You mean so, the, the, the which one? The, the Halloween one. Three. The first Halloween. Oh, Halloween one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah um, we, did, we did that one and three, right? Right. For... Yes. And also Books of Blood Damn. came out on Hulu in 2020. So yes. that was another interesting project that we got to cover. We did Aberat 3 with uh, Peggy O'Leary. Yeah. Which finally got me to read Aberat 3 because I was like, oh, I'm not going to read it until everything is like published. <laughs> yeah. And Joe Bob Briggs had a, an episode of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs where they had Ashley Lawrence and Doug Bradley and they played Hellbound. So that was great seeing them in a, a like a big mainstream yeah, show like Joe that on Mako Shutter. and Catalina they worked did, on that. They did, yeah, they, they, they helped out with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that was 2020. Those were the highlights of it for me. Yeah. It's been a great journey. Uh, like I said, we've had such great opportunities to talk with so many interesting people and people that I've, you know, being a fan of Clyde Barker stuff. And Jeff Razor. Portas. Remember Jeff Portas? Jeff Portas. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I, I didn't mention all the interviews because otherwise we'd be here forever. Right. But we did so many, <laughs> so many yeah. interviews. Um and it's it's been amazing for me. It's been a dream come true because I grew up watching this stuff and listening to this and 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 reading the books, watching the movies. And I never in my life thought eventually I'd be able to be on the phone or on camera with these people talking to them. The asking them questions. Yeah, that 300th episode was really special. That was that was really amazing. You know, the th episode 300 where we had Clive Barker on the phone with us and uh, giving us a thumbs up. And uh, we had so many people that episode. Bradley, was, or, so it sounds like we're, we're going into 2021 right now. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause that's, that was a 2021 thing. So what we're doing for 2021, we are going to go back and do a little bit of, of uh, 2021 in review. So we've got our, our favorite moments from them. And it sounds like we've already covered. Uh, so that was on my list. Episode 300 yeah. actually. No, so, like so episode 300, right. That was big because, uh, a milestone that was a yeah milestone. and well and and uh thanks to si you know help from simon bamford and stuff clive barker kind of broke in and and uh and, and we got us. yeah he he, he he got on the phone with us yeah join us <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun yeah so um, what's your what are your other bests of 2021 i guess i picked five you picked five yeah, so I would say another one for me is The Color of Madness and Sacrifice, the movie. I, I, I was, it was so fun to talk to Paul Kane about his story. We, so we read the story and we watched the movie that was an adaptation of the story. And then we got to talk to Paul Kane about it. And it was so neat because that was such a cool movie. And it was neat to see, to, you know, see him and, and uh and you know see how 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 proud he was that his story became this awesome you know movie with barbara crampton 
yeah with barbara crampton it was a great it so that was that was fun for me and 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 uh, a neat movie it was one of my first experiences to see something in 4k because i just got a 4k tv nice oh, wow nice it was a um, lot of fun yeah so that was one of mine uh what about you guys ed and nina do you have one yeah, I mean, if you're going to go one by one, I mean, why don't you do all your five real quick? Well, we usually go, we, yeah, we we, we yeah, usually one, don't one, do one. it like that. Oh, okay. okay. Well, then one, one, one. Okay, Nina, well, you go. Yeah. Well, the first one um, I, I had written down was uh, the Jeff Portis. Sure. Uh, cool. Yeah, that was, that was an amazing episode with Jeff. Uh, it was a long time in the making, and uh, it was great was talking so to him. so gracious and so yeah. sweet and nice. What a great guy so yeah. detailed in his replies and so uh, concise it was uh it was really awesome to talk to jeff and i love yeah. how he was kind enough you know to give us um some trivia question answers you know and then <laughs> yeah you know, then we really i really wanted to get in into the to the weeds with him on how the pinhead makeup it was exactly done and he was very forthcoming with the information that was great yeah he yeah. just texted me from spain this week he was on vacation there so that was it was great that I still get to talk to him like that. And uh, he's such a great guy. Yes. Don't, don't ever play words with friends with him because he'll slaughter <laughs> you. <laughs> That's right. But then, you know, okay. So many others. Yeah. Jose, uh, do you have another one? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have, you know, basically the whole of Jericho Squad 77. I mean, yeah. I, I, I enjoy the heck out of that. It was my first time playing an RPG game, Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, it was a quick learning curve. And I, I really enjoyed creating the character, finding the backstory for it, being able to play with all you find people like you and your brother and Lori and Joe and Catalina and Brant, you know, making new friends. It was such fun and such a bonding experience. I, that, that was on my list too. I, I had a blast with that. And um, I, th I remember one time at the beginning, you asked like, how many episodes are we going to do? Or when is this going to end? And I'm like, you guys are writing the story with me, right? Because right. The, the way I thought it was going to go at the beginning completely got swept under the rug. I never sure. imagined for a second that you would make a, a deal with hell, you yes. know, or... Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, or they, some I some characters you, you put gonna, in our way. I thought you guys were just going to fight Magera. I had no idea that you would make a deal with her. Yeah, and so that's that's the fun of D and D is that it's a sort of a collaborative story. Right. Well, you I know, didn't really make a deal with Magera. I made a deal with Magera's husband because he was way too powerful, and I knew that we started right. if we started. Well, you fight, but you started out instead of fighting Magera, you made a deal that you would uh, that you would go with her. Well, hell. she was nice. She wasn't really <laughs> threatening us. So I'm like, yeah. okay, let's roll with it. Because I always wanted to, to go through one of these things and find like a peaceful way of yeah. dealing with like That's a not way going to, into combat. That's to be interesting because most D&D &D people that I ever met, you know, and played with and stuff, they always just want to hack and slash, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, and I thought it was great. And and uh, and for experience points, it's the same experience if you avoid a fight as if you get in it you know, for, for the way I do it, because yeah. I figure that's, you know, that's important to learn. And also combat takes forever. And you don't get to zero health points and have to like <laughs> roll for saving throws. <laughs> yeah. The exactly. difference between Star Trek, the next generation and Star Trek. It's like they have a counselor on board, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was always scared whenever we did a combat that one of our characters would die and be like, then he's out of the game. What's going to happen? Yeah. Like, they yeah. Just put out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, well, you can make a, a new character if that happens. Sure. Or then we DM would need to resurrect it, them or something. But, up to the DM. Well, and, and, um, and uh, yeah, well, low level characters can't. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, there was an added level of gravity to that, to dying, because then we would have to pay for another, uh, another character portrait. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it's a budgetary Which, concern. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining someone dying and creating a new character. And then in, in the actual story world, it'd be like, oh, no, Chertevere died. And then, hey, who's that guy? Oh, I'm Chertevere's cousin. Uh, Ludovico <laughs> I look exactly <laughs> like him. <laughs> Hey guys, what's yeah, up? Yeah, that, that that that's a there's like a comic or a meme of that, or like you know they cross out the, or they just write Junior after the name of on sure. the character sheet. 
Yeah. It's like the yeah. uh, lost skeleton of Kadabra returns. It's like, uh, oh, I, I'm his brother. You know, his twin, <laughs> yeah. twin brother. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's but a John Woo movie like that, too. Years. Better Tomorrow, too, where he was the, you know, wait, I thought you died. No, I'm his twin brother. <laughs> uh, oh, man, that's great. Yeah, so my next one, uh, Candyman 2021. I love that movie. And um, uh, it was great getting together with you guys and, and doing, we did a, we did a feature episode about it, spoiler free. And then we did the audio commentary, spoiler full. And, uh, <laughs> and it was great. I, 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 it was a fun movie. It had some neat nods to Clive Barker, like the, the, a weave world paperback, you know, could be spotted in there. The character, uh, the gallery owner named Clive. Yeah, a gallery owner named Clive, and um, without spoiling the movie, the it did a nice homage to the Tony Todd Candyman, and and uh, and the the yeah, the imagery, the bees, the the mirrors, a lot of that. Yeah, and 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 it also made it in a way that was faithful to the short story because you know Candyman as a, a being a, a, a rumor or being yeah, created. Not- created by urban myth he's not yes. specific to any one place or any nationality or anything he's just a yeah. ghost of a of a legend yeah and and to me it was a nice way of folding the uh folding the the, the, the forbidden short story into the narrative of all the Candyman movies yeah he's like trauma made flesh and uh yeah. I, I i like the fact that it was uh, uh an actual sequel to the first movie uh, with recurring characters and, you know, very intimately connected to the first movie, not just the, okay, let's just do it over from the beginning. You know, I, I really thought that was one of the best Clive Barker uh, based movies uh, that I've seen in the last several years. So I was really happy with that one. That was also on my list. So that covers my number two. All right. Pipe in about the shadow puppets on that. Yeah, really, the, the, really love. Even though I'm blind puppets. and I couldn't see it, I mean, just the yeah, description. Really awesome. I pictured it in my head, like you know, the Thai Poussin type or Bon Ruka, you know, Rukun, you know, Japanese rod stick puppet. Oh yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, I love that sort of thing. I'm a stop motion fanatic. I, you know, anything like that, I I highly applaud. Yeah, it was a neat, uh, bold sort of artistic choice, and and uh, you know, and and I love that because from, so often sequels are just like let's, you know, let's try to do what the first one did, only you know, lower yeah, budget or whatever, a little but, different. Yeah. And from 2018 yeah. to 2021, it was a lot of stuff came out with Candyman. Like the first movie came out in 4K, the second one also came out in Blu-ray. There were like uh, albums of the soundtracks came out with like right yeah that double in. album of Philip Glass with with Candyman yeah. one and two. There was even a fragrance uh, from <laughs> right. I, I don't know I don't know who put <laughs> yeah. it out, but it's like I remember an article we put up like Do you want to know how Candyman smells? Here's your chance, and it was like <laughs> some fragrance. I don't know if it was Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab or something like that. I that think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was oh a lot God. of <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And Tony Todd of, got himself in trouble for tweeting that he 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 was in the movie and then on Twitter and then it was like oh no you shouldn't have said that <laughs> it was, yeah. it was a, a pretty cool thing and then just the way that movie came out with forceps because it was like supposed to come out in 20, 19. 20, 19 and then it was like yeah. no it's coming out in twenty twenty and then twenty twenty is the mess that we all know and then it was like no it's coming up later in twenty twenty and then no it's coming out in twenty twenty one I was like oh my god finally they, came out. They stuck to their guns like they filmed that movie before COVID right in 2019, but they stuck to their guns and they said, no, we want this to be a theatrical experience. I, you know, whatever is going on as soon as this is passed, which it, I didn't, but you know, yeah. this is going to be in the theater. And so they Halloween 2020, it finally came out. And they, they right. made the right choice because it made a lot of money. And also yeah. other films like that, like Dune and stuff said, we're going to be in the theater, you know? Yeah. Oh, and good time to plug the blog where we have exclusive video footage of Tony Todd talking about his experience on Canada. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was cool. Shameless plug, from, plug, he, plug back in the that day. Was, uh, that was around the time of Candyman 2, right? 
Right, right. 1992, right? Yeah. 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 And he was yes. appearing at a Fangoria Before Weekend of Horrors. Before Candyman 2. He didn't even yeah. know what direction they were going to go. Oh, yeah. so as a sort of a... a he a, hadn't read saying... a script or anything yet. Wow. Go check it out. ClydeBarkerCast.com. It's one of the most recent articles that we have there. Yeah. But he does talk about some cool things from Candyman 1, like how they did the bees in his mouth and all that, you know. Which were real. There was a bee <laughs> yes. wrangler. Yeah. Bee wrangler. I'm imagining a guy with bees on leashes. Like, okay. Why is everyone on the crew all dressed up? <laughs> <laughs> like bee farmers or beekeepers. Yeah. Um, that guy was actually from Berkeley, the entomologist who's his bee expert. Right here, Berkeley. Oh, California. wow. Did you also have Candyman on your uh, best of 2021, Ed and Nina? Nina? Um, gosh, no, actually, I had Godzilla. Oh, oh, yeah. That was, yeah. Know, it's, not, it's not just doing the episode, but the research is a lot of fun. The yeah. homework for Godzilla was a lot of fun because we got. Because she went back into my archives whole, of some of my Yeah, stuff, the whole yeah. three epic, you know, eras of Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. And she found this old VHS oh, yeah. tape of mine that I got when I was in Japan in 1985. And the guy who actually designed that Godzilla, that 1985 Godzilla, drew on the box for me, you know. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. You guys pump yeah. Them, you know. Is that the I one think... with Matthew Broderick? No, no. Oh, no, 1985. No, it's never the mind. the Japanese yes. one, you know. The, right, yeah, with right, Raymond right. Burr. Yeah. yeah. Well, they put Raymond Burr in it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, just like they did the first time. Right. Yeah. But, but that was one of the things that Ed and I, when we met, we had a lot in common at first superficially because of Hellraiser. That's how we met because I was a Cenobite. But, you know, once we got to know each other, we found out we both loved Ultraman and Godzilla, you know, so. All kinds of yeah, things. Yeah. Batman, cool. 1966, Adam West, Batman, you know, oh, Godzilla. <laughs> all that pop culture yeah, stuff. You know. 85, that was, you know my day lord of the rings you know, star <laughs> wars in my 20s and 85 we love all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah lord of the rings you guys dressed I, up as like orcs yeah i was yeah. i was 11 in 1985 oh wow <laughs> <laughs> i was nine i was uh, in japan <laughs> oh wow yeah 10 years later i was in japan and um we had an earthquake like a massive earthquake in kobe that killed six thousand people Wow. Uh, but at that time, everybody I talked to had had a dream about Godzilla. And so that kind of made me really deep dive into Godzilla. And I wanted to know how did Godzilla get into the collective unconscious of Japan? And mm -hmm. and I wrote a I wrote a story about it for my history of Japanese cinema class because I was going to college there. That's and uh, cool. so that that's kind of what got me going on 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 Godzilla. Were you like a foreign exchange student? No, I was I was going to uh, uh, Edmonds Community College Japan campus. Okay. Yeah, so I took I took Japanese, uh, of course, and I took Japanese word processing, which was a horrible mistake, <laughs> and I had to drop out of that class because I was competing against Japanese people, like for how fast you can type in Japanese, and sure. um, and in Japanese, the smarter you are, the more you can replace the japanese alphabet with chinese characters and there's sixty thousand chinese characters wow right because there's one for every word so um i couldn't do it i mean it's like i didn't you know grow up my whole life with japanese i just knew, you know i knew enough from from high school and college and stuff but right you were competing with the pros yeah so i had to drop out of that after a while when i realized that i was just typing out ozzy osborne lyrics on my keyboard <laughs> then i realized I, I should probably just drop out of this class i am iron man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how would you say i am iron man in japanese uh, watashi wa iron man okay. <laughs> are you good try good try so ryan what's what's your number four uh um a coffin full of candy with pete atkins oh yeah that was great no. yeah that was a lot of fun um it's always great having him on there and you know in, in he's 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 a he's a fun person to talk to he's he's sort of self-deprecating and yes he's and very easygoing and and he's super so fun to talk to and uh when he's on we don't have to talk very much yeah. <laughs> yes. and, and barbie was there too barbie well right 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. I have that one also on my number two. It was Halloween with Peter Atkins and Barbie. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yep. We and, we really had fun with that one. And I think Eric had said, like, you should save a coffin full of candy as a title. And I thought he meant for that episode. So that's what I've named it. And he goes, that's not I what I meant. Pete said that. Oh, it was Pete said that. Yeah. yeah. Eric Gross was on that episode with us, too. There you go. Yeah. But Pete loved that idea of a coffin full of candy. He said, oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I, I, I still regret to this day, like, we had. We had probably like 50 pounds of candy or, you know, 100 a pounds of candy. What in about a coffin. the coffin? And we threw the whole thing into a dumpster. I know. It's like the coffin itself, even. I mean, I'm a prop yeah. maker guy, you know? It's yeah. Like... It, it was so heavy dragging that thing around a shopping mall. Go listen to that one because that was <laughs> yeah. Halloween episode of this year. Yeah. Uh, 2021. So uh, always great to have special guests like that. Yeah um ed and nina do you guys have another one nina um let's see um i like the movie episodes the the bad seat i have written down but i don't know if if it's uh it's number six (laughs) because you got because we're overlapping (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. i i've been i've been uh highlighting the ones that overlap sure yeah the the, all the commentary tracks have been a lot of fun like the raven uh bad seed uh the, black the, sunday the, the, the exorcist <laughs> one i really liked the, oh yeah that was amazing that was super great to watch and movie. and that it was funny you can hear me learning on you know on on there that uh you're putting it together that max von Sydow was not as old as he looked in the movie right that the makeup like, is so good yeah i was like you know wait a minute because max von Sydow looks exactly the same in return in the new star wars movie as he did back in the 79 or whatever in the exorcist right He's like, like he he's has like, no uh, makeup on in the Star Wars one. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but they, they did they, such a good job that they predicted what he was going to look like in the exactly. future. Exactly, that's good. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as well as all the rest of the excellent Dick Smith makeup throughout the film with Reagan, yeah. you know, vomiting and all that good stuff. <laughs> I had uh, my number five and last one was the Hellraiser Hulu news. So the fact that, uh, you know, the Hulu project has been going on all this time and, and, you know, knowing that they cast people, hearing about who they cast, hearing about the pinhead cast. And then pictures of people with a box in their hand. Yeah, the boxes on Instagram and stuff that the actor had. Um, and then finding out that the f- principal photography was done and that it's really going forward. And I'm like, wow, I mean, I'm yeah. looking forward to another Hellraiser movie if it's going to be like this. And they're uh, really uh, they're really keeping the, the plot and the uh, like tightly under wraps. There's no images out there of what Pinhead looks like or of any scenes from the movie at all. It's all no behind the scenes stuff like that. Well, so, you know what? I'm I'm gonna track stuff like that down. I hope because I just found out that I'm gonna be able to communicate with the people that are doing the effects. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's gonna be really really interesting to see if we can talk to them when that stuff comes out. Um, it should be very soon, I think. I hope so. I hope so. I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the Hulu one and also the HBO uh, TV series that is supposedly being. Yeah, now that's the big mystery right now. We heard virtually nothing about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and I kind of wonder if it's like stuck in pre-production. I have no idea. Yeah. We'll we'll, find out, I guess. Yeah. We will eventually. Yeah. We've we've had projects that we thought were coming out soon and they didn't. And we had projects that we thought were never coming out and all of a sudden there they are. And, you know, we're reviewing them. It's, it's, it's the fun part of being a podcast. And then right, one right. Of the other and big it, things that happened this year was Clyde is getting his rights back as of December, I believe. That that's another that's another big thing. Yes. Well, last year actually, it was December of 2021. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh I thought it was this year. Okay. It was December, mid December of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. That he put that lawsuit. It's a up. huge, bo- big piece of news. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and one one uh, it related to the Kickstarter uh, and to kick our Kickstarters in general. Uh, my last one is getting our interview book finished, finished as far as our what we contribute to it. Right. Jose and I have been working on that thing since our Kickstarter in 2017. 
Right. Uh, and we had Heard some pre-orders of it for everybody out there that pre-ordered it. I'm so thankful for your patience because we didn't realize how hard it was going to be to transcribe all those interviews. Our microphones but, were not that good for some of the first episodes. Oh my God. Yeah. So we, we, so we, we started using an automated system for, for transcribing and then we would go through it and edit. And uh, sometimes it did a terrible job under trying to understand people. We, 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 garbled, um, garbled yeah, stuff. yeah, it was, it was bad audio quality because we had bad microphones. And on top of that, we're talking to people across the ocean and people who had accents, you know, and so it was a uh, several things against um, trying to do automated done. transcription. To give, it's finally done and ready to give over to some editors now, right? Yes, it's right. That's right. So we're we're working on uh, on getting it edited and published, and uh, and then we'll have it ready to go. And we're gonna, of course, we're gonna honor all the pre orders that that people made. Uh, we've got that money still set aside from all the way back in 2017 uh, mm-hmm. for those pre orders. We're gonna get those done, and we're gonna do, and we're gonna have another pre order for when it's actually ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. will also provide a copy to all the guests that were on interviewed on that uh, book. Yeah. And everybody that contributed to helping with transcribing interviews, you know, Raul was a big one. Uh, yeah. Rob Reidenauer helped out with it, with transcriptions as well. Um, so thank you guys. That was, uh, you know, you really helped us get it to where it is now. Uh, thank you guys. Yay. Get it published. Yay. Yay. So if we don't, if we don't find a publisher, we'll self publish and we have money set aside for that. Um, but we're, we're going to look at publishers first. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. And then you can put that to bed and move on with other things. Yeah. So, um, and that, that, I think that covers Jose's and my list. Um, Ed and Nina, do you guys have any more? Uh, what you want to add something in? Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, one of the things that we, you guys, um, on the podcast didn't do an episode about, but I really loved was there was a bunch of pop culture, um, pinhead references and Cenobite references. There was a, a Doctor Who episode that uh, had a Cenobite looking characters. There was, uh, Gottmik did the. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Did a gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pinhead, Paul, yeah. The RuPaul yeah, that show. Was gorgeous. Yeah, and and, um, and that's all dancing, stuff we'll yes. we'll talk about in passing, but don't make a whole episode about it. Right, right. and there was well, dancing, the news episodes the stars, covered a lot of this um, stuff. You know, yeah, dancing with the stars, yeah. uh, pinhead, uh, pinhead makeup, and the um, Miz, uh, the wrestler, and, the Miz, um, right? Yeah. Yep, and the other, the singer, um, is it Cardi, Cardi B? Cardi B. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was um, Meg yeah, the Stallion. Oh, okay. Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah, on Halloween photo shoot that Meg the Stallion thighs, dressed up I'm as sorry. Pinhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a then, sexy you know, Pinhead. In the yeah, world yeah. of like action figures and model kits and things like that, there was a few releases as well. Like NECA came out with an ultimate Pinhead that you know yes. all the all the previous Pinheads had like their skirt where you know if you picked them up and looked you know it was just like a a resin i mean just a solid plastic hunk you know this one right. had legs and an actual <laughs> skirt you know? i think that that might have been like 2020 right uh, okay well anyways it's the year couple past years in review <laughs> yeah. isn't there yeah. like also a candy man deluxe figure that came out I think. Oh, from the original Tony Todd version, right? And and, and so. NECA did a, a, a Dr. Decker from Nightbreed oh, uh, yes. a couple yes. of years back, too. Yes. So hopefully there'll be more of that sort of thing. Oh, and also Trick or Treat Studios in recent past had apparently had the rights on their website. They had a Lament configuration. They had flat Nightbreed artwork, like, you know, stuff that you could put on your wall that was like sort of slightly three-dimensional plastic pieces that would have like Midian or, um, you know, if I think it's still on their website, but I believe they may have lost the license finally, but they had Nightbreed and they had Hellraiser and, you know, they were offering certain items, you know, they had the Decker mask, they had the Berserker mask, they had, I believe the uh, um, Mr. Kinski, you know, like the moon face guy that, that oh yeah, play. okay, yeah. Yeah, we covered some of those when they came out in articles in our blog. We have 96 pages of posts on our blog full of articles yeah. that go way back wow. to like 2012. Wow. So, yeah. 
Yeah. If anybody out there wants to come back and start writing news stories for us again, you know, we, we would love to have you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's been a great year. Um, it kept me yeah. sane throughout 2020 and 2021. And I'm so happy and grateful for everybody who's kept us going so far and who's contributed to our Kickstarters and who sends us bits of news and who, you know, just keeps listening to us because it's great to have feedback. And, uh, you know, we're always open to that. So, yeah. Interactive. Interactive. And and at this point, we typically would uh, would go on to what, you know, what's coming next. But that's going to depend on you guys, the backers, right? So what's coming next is if we meet our goals. Uh, you'll have more interviews, more news, uh, more commentaries, uh, a more Jericho squad. Send what's that? Suggestions, ideas, questions. Yeah. You know, like when there's an interview coming up, like with Doug Bradley, send in your, your questions. And when you have an idea for something, you know, like um, I've been, one of the things I wanted to mention was, you know how some other podcasts and youtubers and stuff will do these uh live chats and they'll have like super chats where people can donate money you know like uh i'm giving you ten dollars for the super chat you know and stuff i i wonder if uh the listeners or fans would be interested in something like that you know you're talking about streams like going on a stream and yeah you know, yeah doing that okay yeah i mean we haven't really done anything like that and um there are yeah, websites we- that are uh, more prepared for that sort of thing like twitch and stuff but yeah. i get, we can look into that in the it's future yeah. we there, tried right? to do twitch on our on our jericho squad um and to do streaming on that and it was so complicated that we just thought you know let's go back to recording and editing instead of instead of doing stuff live so just we don't do good. live very often yeah <laughs> just an idea though you know because of the no, money. sure yeah send us ideas send us suggestions send us feedback and uh there's only so many weeks in the year that we can uh, put out our stuff but if you guys have great ideas we'll add those to next year who knows yeah or even this year if we have the space but you know so far we got a pretty good lineup on the kickstarter so it all depends on you the viewer and the backer what you want to what you want us to do yeah and i was also thinking that you know people when you have like those episodes when people want to, you know, join for a, a chat, you know, a, a round table discussion or whatever, you know, that's great too. I hope people listening, you know, want to, want to participate and stuff. Right. Right. And that, that's one of the rewards that we forgot to mention, because honestly, I just get slipped my mind, but yeah, that, that is one of the things, uh, one of the reward tiers is to help plan an episode, which is, is open because sometimes people want to join. Sometimes they just want a, a specific topic to be discussed, um, and so that's that's totally up to you. If you want to, if you want to um, help create an episode, that's one of our reward tiers. Please do. You know, we're, I've always we'll wanted happy to, 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 to talk to people about making a fan film, a Hellraiser fan film, and see what the community out there. You know, if you open it up and say like, "Hey, anybody out there? You know, got any ideas for a fan film or whatever?" You know, <laughs> there's been a recent one that was on YouTube about some sort of like, was it a a sorority or it's not a sorority? It's like a a, a house of strippers, and then they open a box and Pinhead shows up. It it's on YouTube. I I think we mentioned that in one of the episodes. So oh, wow. there are still people making little short fan films around there. So I love <laughs> yeah. that. I yeah. Love yeah. That. We try to well, and that. and and of course, our friends at Little Spark Films—they've done uh, they've yes. done uh, little yes. little short films uh, profiling all the different puzzle boxes, like commercial from, uh, yeah. from Pyramid Gallery and from yeah. Derek Neal. Uh, is he's configuration boxes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. I think that you know, I mean, even though I can't see them, I can hear them, and I I'm very imaginative. I can picture you know people describe those you know, good work, little spark films, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I'm just stoked that we're, you know, most podcasts don't really make it past 10 years, I guess, uh, very rarely. Yeah. So we're still doing this for now and uh, we'll be around as long as you want us to be around, I guess. Yeah. Uh, keep coming up with ideas. <laughs> yeah. Keep coming up with yeah. ideas and keep, keep uh, being our friends and our listeners. Cause we really appreciate you. Can't do it without you. Smash yeah. like buttons and comments. 
<laughs> Smash that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Subscribe, subscribe, and check out <laughs> and check out our T Public store when it's up. Right, yeah, yeah. right. And uh, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please check out all the unique, cool stuff. Most everything that's on there, there's only one of. So you know, as you're as you're listening to this, somebody may have already bought the thing that you want. So go check it out. Yes move fast all right <laughs> if it's something you want don't wait <laughs> yeah and this podcast having no beginning will have no end yay all right thank you for joining us and we hope you have subscribed you can find the clive barker podcast wherever you find audio show notes for this episode as well as news and reviews can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com the Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.